I hope you are enjoying this uh, picture drawing session. Uh, we have shown you some beautiful pictures of 1s and 2s orbitals already. Now, uh, in this module which is going to be a little short, we are going to show you 3s as well. But before that let us complete our discussion of 2s orbital. Uh, we have shown you what 2s orbital looks like already. You get a node at uh, r equal to 2a by z and we have shown you how if we plot it in 3 dimensions we can get a depiction like this. Uh, please do not forget that this vertical axis is wave function nothing else wave function. So, from there you can generate this uh, contour diagram and what you see in white here is really the radial node where r is equal to 2a divided by z. And we also gave you this kind of a view if you look from the bottom you see these contours and you can see this big peak that is there inside. But that is only the orbital what I do not have on these slides but I have uh, shown you in the previous module is that uh, what happens when you consider psi square and what happens well capital R square in this case one and the same and what happens when you multiply that capital R square by small r square and get the radial probability density. Okay. Now, uh, let us go back to this definition that we like to debunk so much that an orbital is a, a region of space where probability of finding the electron is maximum. Well, uh, the definition is there in so many places there must be something in it right. So, let me just uh, modify it a little bit and say that an orbital can be used to, un to determine the space the region of space where finding probability of finding the electron is maximum. Let me say that once again. An orbital can be used to define the region of space where probability of finding the electron with that wave function is maximum. How do you do that? Well, you have these curves right. Well, you have psi psi star d tau. If you integrate then what happens? Let me take you back to that plot. Well, maybe we will work in one dimension well two dimensions say this one right this is the pl plot of r square capital R square for 2s against r ok. We are talking about radial probability distribution function. Suppose I want to know what is the total probability what is the to total probability well I can say it without doing anything total probability is 1. But if I am to get total probability is equal to 1 then I have to integrate from 0 to infinity right that is not something that we want to do. But one thing that comes out very nicely is if you just look at the numbers now remember x axis is in terms of a 0 ok for z equal to 1 let us put z equal to 1 for now this is 2 a 0 actually it is 2 a 0 by z. So, uh, if you go up to infinity then probability of finding the electron is 1. Suppose I do not go up to infinity uh, maybe I will increase this a little bit. right now it is up to 16. So, let me make it up to 25 or something yeah. So, while it is true that this function goes on until infinity I hope that you will agree with me that it does not matter if I assume that uh, if I work with the function up to a limit of say uh, 15 angstrom because beyond 15 angstrom is very little. So, if I take area of this curve maybe 99.999 percent of it will be uh, there until this 15 angstrom or so. Beyond that you will have a very very small amount of probability. So, even though uh, the orbital goes up to infinity there is no need for us to go up to infinity uh, it is enough if we uh, go up to 15. Now, let us think like this let us say I draw uh, I take this radius of 15 angstrom this is going to be 15 angstrom for hydrogen right. Uh, well assuming uh, bore radius to be 1 angstrom it is not exactly 1 angstrom so that factor will be there. 
So, let us say I go up to 50 angstrom somewhere here. So, probability of finding the electron inside a sphere of that radius will be how much? So, 99.999 percent. If I draw that sphere, then this uh, surface of that sphere encompasses 99.999 percent probability of finding the electron. That surface is called a constant probability surface. So, if I want to draw a 99.999 percent surface, then perhaps I have to take a radius of 15. Suppose I am ok with uh, say 95 percent, where will I have to truncate 95 percent will be somewhere here actually, yeah maybe here. So, uh, let us say 11 angstrom, if I draw a circle of 11 angstrom, then that circle would contain 95 percent probability uh, of occurrence of the electron, right. So, this way uh, we can draw surfaces okay? and when we draw the surface we might as well draw another circle inside it because this circle of say radius 2 angstrom uh, well 2a0 angstrom is going to be the uh, nodal surface. The nodal surface here radial node is going to be a sphere right surface of a sphere. So, we might as well draw that because there is no probability density of finding the electron at that particular surface. So, uh, that is how we often designate probabilities and more often than not we mistake those plots to be orbitals, they are not. Those are plots of probability of finding electrons in particular orbitals, they are constructed using the orbitals. Okay? Uh, so, let us I ho hope that we will not have any further confusion in this matter anymore. We have talked about constant probability surfaces and let me show you some ways in which these probabilities can be uh, determined. So, uh, let us not think for a moment that probabilities are not important, probabilities are all important. When we want to talk about things like bonding, we want to know what is the region where probability of finding the electron is more, where what is the region where it is less. Right? So, we have to work it out. So, how do you designate it? Well, this we are, this is how one can designate it. So, use different colors. Okay? You put dots, more dots where probability is maximum. So, as you see if you go out along a radius, density of dots here is more. As you go further out, density of dots decreases and uh, finally, there is hardly anything. Right? So, it is sort of like a galaxy, lot of stars and then towards the fringe of a galaxy it fades out and then there is nothing, okay? something like that. It does not mean that it is actually 0, it is just that the density of dots is so few that you do not see it. Okay? And inside you use uh, dots of different color to designate the sign is different, sign of the wave function. Probability or probability density is always positive. So, sign of the wave function can also be conveniently shown in figures like this using colored dots. Well, another way in which you can show it is this kind of three dimensional Pac-Man kind of figures where you show a section, draw a solid figure with one particular color inside whenever the sign changes draw another solid figure. I like the this one uh, is prettier, but the previous one actually contains more information because it sort of tells you at what kind of radius you have the maximum probability of occurrence. Okay. This is uh, a more qualitative uh, definitely better looking depiction, but please do not forget these are not orbitals. These are using orbitals depictions of regions of space where pro probability of uh, well uh, it is a depiction of probability distribution of these 2 s electrons. Okay. These are not orbitals, orbitals have been used here and once again let me thank Professor Shashidhar for having created these beautiful images uh, almost 20 years ago. Okay, now, let us go to 3s orbital. 3s orbital as we know has a uh, polynomial of second order. So, Yeah. 
CS orbital remember has in its expression a polynomial of second order the three terms. So, polynomial of second order equated to 0 gives you two roots and you can work out what these roots are I think they are 1.9 and 9 if you just take z to be uh, 1 and a to be 1. So, it they occur in two different places in fact you see what the values are here ok. So, you have two radial nodes. So, when you start at r equal to 0 at the nucleus you may start with a positive value of the wave function it falls off to 0 that is a node changes sign then it has to rise again. So, there is a minimum point then there is another node rises again and falls off to 0 at uh, well again asymptotically ok. This is 3s orbital once again we see that the innermost part is most if I can say intense followed by the second part the third part seems to have the least height ok. Once again when you multiply by r square we will take square of this multiply by r square uh, even though it is repetitive I will just do it for you um, what was the expression 27 minus 2x 18 plus 2x I think. Please do not try to remember these expressions as you can see I do not remember them myself there is no need. Yeah, 27 minus 18 x plus 2 x square that kind of an expression. So, I can write 27 minus 18 star 18 into x plus 2 x square. Okay, we have to get rid of everything else and while doing all this uh, let us not forget that this factor is multiplied by an exponential term and I will take you back in case you have not noticed what the exponential term is. The exponential term is e to the power minus z r by 3 a for our purpose we will set z to 1 a to 1 it will be uh, z divided by uh, 3. Hmm, let us see. So, we have seen the functional form for the C s orbital. So, let me just put that in 27 minus 18 into x remember x here is actually r what we have studied there and I am not using z I have set z to be 1 I am writing this in terms of a 0. So, a 0 is also set to be 1 so all that is fine. So, simply I get 27 minus 18 x plus 2 x square multiplied by e to the power minus x by 3 remember the exponential term earlier it was e to the power minus x by 2 this time it is x by 3 and here it is. This is your 3s orbital we have seen some depiction already but here you have seen uh, how it shows up when I key in the expression uh, this is what I get. So, not very difficult to understand uh, you have an exponential decay that is why at x equal to 0 we have a maximum and then you have a decay, but then this decay is modulated by this factor by which it is multiplied which is a polynomial and since the polynomial is of second order it becomes equal to 0 for two values of x. So, here it is 0 here it is 0 and next it becomes 0 asymptotically at r equal to infinity ok. So, this here is your uh, 2D depiction of 3s orbital we will show you the uh, 3D depiction also before that let me do something let me take this whole thing uh, multiply it by itself and multiply it by r square here x is r. What am I doing here I am trying to plot the radial probability distribution function am I not. So, capital R square multiplied by small r square that is what we are doing. So, this is what we get E. So, we have of course, you have to zoom out, zoom out even more and then we will fix it ok we have this is more like it well of course, you do not see anything here, but we will just take care of that in a moment. We started from minus 0 0.2 
went up to 30. So, that is what we will keep now y axis we will have to see here actually we do not need anything in minus maybe I will keep minus 1 or something and we have gone up to 500 here. So, let us make that 510 here you are see what happened remember uh, what the uh, original wave function was it had 3 portions that is right. But at the center nearest to the nucleus it had the maximum value of psi and then it decayed went to 0 cross 0 so that was a node then turned again cross once again and then went to another maximum did that once again finally went to 0. So, in these 3 parts that you had this part was the maximum most intense you can say followed by this followed by this I am going to show the wave function once again. But the moment I multiplied by r square after squaring the wave function itself this outer lobe has become the major lobe. So, if you just look at the wave function this is this looks like the smallest part, but the moment you take care of the uh, volume element which is simply small r square in this case it blows up. Okay. So, uh, let me just show you once again I will take all this out now it is very simple we just have to change frame limits once or twice maybe and go back to the original figure. that look a little better. Yeah. See, the, see what I was saying the outer lobe is actually uh, quite small if you just look at the wave function, but well let us see what happens when we take square of that. So, even the square of it this part has blown up followed by this and this is what it is even if you take psi psi star psi psi well psi square in this case or capital R square in this case what is it probability density. So, probability density is maximum near the nucleus and then it has like smaller regions as you go higher further out, but the moment you multiply it by the uh, volume element component of volume element small r square in this case this outer lobe which had least probability density at least in the maximal position that becomes the biggest one. I wish I had better memory so that I would remember what the value was earlier will be the same value after all yeah see now this actually has greater probability. So, this is something that demonstrates very very nicely the difference between probability density and probability even though probability density is minimum in this region because of the volume element probability is actually maximum ok. This is the point that uh, I perhaps I have said earlier or perhaps I will say once again, but it is a very very important point it is important to understand it is not just probability density probability is also governed by the volume element that you are considering. Okay. So, this was in 2 dimensions let us now go over and show you the 3 dimensional plot I'll show you the 3 dimensional picture.
okay. This is your 3 x for you and uh, draw the frame limits, we will draw it from 30 to 30, same here. this would be something like minus 3 to 30 or so. Okay, this is 3 or orbital first look it might uh, look exactly the same as 2s orbital, but actually it is not. You see we have this sharp part for small values of r, then it goes through this first uh, node and becomes negative and then goes through the second node and becomes positive. Do you see this? This is the second node becomes positive. So, this is your uh, contour diagram, this is uh, the function. So, let us see that this orientation if you can uh, see in 3 dimensions you can see this sharp and tall uh, innermost portion followed by the negative basin followed by the positive small peak. So, let us see uh, what happens when I take square of this and multiply it by your uh, the volume element r square square of this multiplied by r square would simply be x square plus y square oops it is blown up this is what it looks like. So, once again you can see the outermost lobe is the major lobe followed by a smaller one and you can hardly see the innermost one. Why is it that uh, the trend has completely reversed because we multiplied by r square. For some reason the 2D plot seems to be a problem, but uh, I think we have in any case shown you the result. So, we will come back to this one later. Okay. So, this is the plot that somehow we could not plot in real time unfortunately something is wrong. But uh, you are familiar with this anyway and you have seen what it looks like in 3 dimensions and from there one can construct this uh, 3 dimensional probability plot of uh, 3s orbital. Remember the color denotes the sign of the wave function and the density of dots denotes the uh, value of not the wave function psi not its square psi square, but psi psi square multiplied by r square. Okay. So, this is how we often designate the orbitals, but please remember these are not orbitals, these are using orbitals we have worked out the regions the well the uh, radial distribution of probability of 3s electrons. So, as usual you can draw it like this like Professor Shashidhar had done. So, we have talked about uh, 1s, 2s, 3s wave functions, we have learned how to uh, draw them in 2 dimensions and 3 dimensions remembering that one of the dimensions is always orbital. We have also been able to plot for ourselves uh, capital R square multiplied by R square the radial probability distribution function. But one thing that is common in all these orbitals is that 
uh, all of these are dependent only on r there is no angular part. The plot thickens the situation becomes more interesting when we go to p orbitals where it is not only about r but it is also about theta and phi. In the next module we are going to discuss p orbitals and d orbitals and there we are going to learn where these uh, p x p y p z and more interestingly d x square minus y square d z square and so on and so forth where these orbitals get their subscripts from.